a restrictive covenant, a group of people who choose to get together, claim a territory, and exclude other people from entering into that territory and or excluding them from interacting with members of the covenant within the claimed territory. The common beef with restrictive covenants is not the people getting together or even claiming a territory, but that they are exclusive in this claim. Morality is intersubjective, that is, it is based on one's opinion of right and wrong and agreement with people that one interacts with. That is morality. It is the intersubjective consensus or the shelling point. When shelling points differ, you get conflict. Almost no two individuals have identical ideas of right and wrong on all issues. But people get along most of the time because the issues where ideas of right and wrong diverge don't come up as often as issues where there is agreement. This is why you will typically only see a couple have heated arguments when certain issues come up where their shelling points differ. Let's say a white-only restrictive covenant kills any black person that tries to enter it. Either someone in the covenant does so, or it's just the stated policy of the covenant. This restrictive covenant is now in a shelling point conflict with anyone who thinks killing black people for entering their claimed land is wrong. And in my opinion, this would put that covenant at odds with most of the world and probably lead to the killing of its leaders, uh, the perpetrators themselves, taking the children into fosterage and forcing the, the adults to do some sort of restitution. But that is just it my opinion. I do not decide such things, nor do I even decide if killing trespassers is wrong. I do not control the shelling point. However, I can say that my personal moral preferences is that killing trespassers is wrong, but that is all I can say. And given this dynamic, I have come to this conclusion. If an action is morally illegitimate, according to the intersubjective consensus, the shelling point, then that action will be stopped. Right now, the state is morally legitimate based on the current shelling point of all of what is called America. There's no getting around this. This is why anyone who says that X is immoral and uses a consistency argument to justify that claim is talking out of their ass and claiming Archon powers. Anyone who says that any restrictive covenant is illegitimate with something other than an appeal to the shelling point is claiming Archon powers. If a covenant or a state or anything is illegitimate, it will be revealed as such and the revelation will be its own destruction. A group of people calling themselves state cannot engage in statist activity without being part of the shelling point. So to achieve the abolition of the state as defined as a compulsively enforced monopoly on violence justified by the shelling point, the state must be pushed out of the shelling point. This has nothing to do with the non-aggression principles or alignment with any ethical ideas at all except by coincidence. If violently enforcing property rights is in the shelling point, then that is morally legitimate. If you don't like it, you can try to change people's minds, but don't pretend it has anything to do with morality because morality is defined by the intersubjective consensus itself. The way to smash the state, in my opinion, is to convince people that the state is incompatible with their personal moral preferences. People have a biological drive to reciprocity as a result of group evolution. And when they discover that taxation is a death threat and a non-reciprocal one, it is my opinion that they will be enraged and will begin to see the state as immoral. Even if they see it as a necessary evil, the state will be out of the shelling point. Everything collapses under the weight of its own immorality as defined by the shelling point. I have always believed that immoral systems would always eventually collapse and now I know why.